Welcome back everybody, I'm Jared, and today we're going to be taking a look at uh, AOKP version 4, the Jelly Bean version of AOKP. Awesome, awesome. Last time I did an AOKP video, it was actually the ice cream sandwich version, and uh, shortly thereafter, Jelly Bean comes out, and so of course they have to get started on that. Um, so anyways, I really wanted to do this video for those of you that have never seen the Jelly Bean version yet or are interested in getting it. I've got hair stuck in my nail there. Awesome, thanks dog. And uh, where was I? Yeah, and also if you've never seen Jelly Bean or uh, AOKP before and you know are kind of interested, here you go. Uh, so anyways, starting from the lock screen here, of course we can add, uh, you have the options at least to add um, date, time, weather, as well as your um, battery percentage, which you can see is discharging at 39% there. Uh, now, unfortunately, they still haven't added, which I would have liked to see both an ice cream sandwich and this version, a uh, jelly bean uh, version of AOKP. They don't have the option to add um, lock screen shortcuts, unfortunately, probably because it is <clears throat> based off of um, AOSP. Nevertheless, slide to the left, access your camera, slide to the right, to unlock the device, and slide up to access your Google Now. We're going to go ahead and unlock the device because that kind of helps with the ROM review. Uh, the ROM itself has been pretty stable for the most part with the exception of a few things that I'll probably tackle a little bit later on in the video. Um, however, again, the, with speed wise, I'm impressed speed wise. Speed wise, that's about it. Uh, battery life on this thing has been satisfactory at best. Um, even in power save mode, I haven't been able to make it a full 24. Well, that's not true. I have been able to make it 24 hours. However, it was cutting it really close and that was with quite light usage. Um, moving on from there, actually, let's go ahead and start with the uh, notification panel. Um, you'll notice here that we've got a couple of different options. Of course, now we have uh, the toggles, things like that, which was, I believe, also available in Ice Cream Sandwich version. Uh, we do have our brightness slider, so if you don't know anything about uh, AOKP, this is an option that you can choose in the settings. Uh, fantastic. I love having my brightness uh, slider right in the um, notification panel there. But we also have the option to add our weather to the notification panel. So not only can you have it on your lock screen, you can have it on your notification panel. If you have it, also on like a widget on your uh, home screens, then you've got weather all over the place and no matter what you're doing you'll always know what the weather's like whether or not to carry an umbrella uh, fantastic stuff they're also long pressing on each um, toggle will take you right into its respective settings menu so that's pretty cool too going ahead and setting uh, jumping into the settings there we've got Wi-Fi Bluetooth data and more um, all standard stuff there nothing new that you wouldn't see um, already in a stock firmware or an AOSP ROM uh, other than AOKP and uh, we're going down to ROM control. Now this is where the meat of the ROM kind of starts to come into play. Uh, we go ahead and jump into general UI. You can choose everything from custom boot animations if you have any. You can disable them, uh, muck around with the carrier label, maybe call it whatever your name is. Um, you can choose the notification background. So you can actually choose a picture and put that as your ba uh, background uh, for your notification as opposed to just a boring black screen. Uh, I thought that was really neat. Um, notification count. So if you have more than one notification, text message, missed call, emails, whatever it may be, it'll give you a little number uh, beside the icon and I'll let you know how many you're missing. Um, lots of great stuff in here. Enable kill all button, hold back to kill the current uh, process or application that you're in. Um, you can force tablet UI, you can change the LCD density, uh, and even enable dual panel, which is cool. Uh, moving on from there, we've got the lock screen here. So you can choose quick pin unlock, menu unlock, wait to lock screen. Uh, you can choose the lock screen wallpaper, of course. Uh, the lock screen battery percentage, all these things you've already seen on the lock screen that I showed you just before. Um, some of the real cool features I like about um, some of the customizations for the lock screen is one, the volume wake. So if you go turn off your screen, I'll just hit my volume button. Uh, generally speaking, that's supposed to wake up the phone, but as you can see, a bit of a bug and is not working in its current state, unfortunately. Uh, moving on from there, you can do music controls as well. Uh, enable weather, uh, lock screen weather style, and uh, you can also enable some calendar options and features. Uh, we're gonna move on from there, jump into power menu. Obviously, some pretty basic stuff in here. Show screenshot, airplane toggle, and show navigation bar. Uh, if I was to go ahead and click on the power menu, this is what you would be looking at. And if I was to go ahead and click uh, show navigation bar, then we've got those options as well. Uh, but I don't like that. So we'll go ahead and back out of there. And um, you can jump right into navigation bar itself and set that up. That is basically the same thing as what you have seen on the Galaxy Nexus. 
Um, however, because this isn't a Galaxy Nexus, I don't understand why anybody would want that, but I do know that there are some of you out there that like it, even though it's totally pointless because you have a menu and a back button and a home button right there. Totally retarded if you ask me, but nevertheless, it's there. It's customizability. It's Android. You gotta love it, right? Uh, jump into battery so you can change around the battery style, uh, the color, the look of it, the whole nine yards. Moving on from there, we've got the clock, of course, clock, boring. Uh, toggles, obviously all this stuff here. So this is where you can start changing things that you can enable the toggles, choose the toggle order, uh, move them around if you want. Uh, the toggle layout, which I think is neat. So you can either choose between this one here, as you can see, or if you prefer, you can have this one up there as you can see, which I actually prefer. I don't know why. I just think it looks cooler. I think the other one just looks too plain Android or what we, what we're all used to. Uh, so you can also choose the toggle style, uh, see what happens once you you know toggle one of the things um you can change the colors the disable colors the background alpha indicator alpha the brightness location which is obviously the brightness slider and uh, you can reset all of them back to default again pretty cool uh, moving on from there, we've got signals. So that being the Wi-Fi data uh, slash data or slash, you know, cell signal strength. Um, you can muck around with the looks and colors of those as well. Pretty cool. Lots of customization options in here. Uh, jumping into LED, this is where a lot of cool stuff happens. Now you can choose um, each individual, uh, a, um, sorry, an individual um, LED notification for specific apps, or um, you can leave it as default and you can choose between how long the LED duration stays on and how long it's off for in between um, the sort of you know flashes the bursts if you will or whatever the hell you want to call it I don't know folks um, what I like also is the brightness now my wife is always complaining about it being too bright so we actually have the option to go ahead and set it to low so that um, it doesn't in the middle of the night blind the hell out of you um, it would have been nice in my opinion to have maybe a toggle so that you could actually um, change it between low and medium because maybe during the day you want to have it set to bright depending on where you are if you're at a really really well lit office or room or maybe you're outside whatever um, and then when you go to bed at night or maybe when you're just at home and the lights are turned to dim you know it'd be nice to turn those down a little bit so it's not blinding you and <laughs> you know kind of setting out like a like a like a search light on the the edge of the ocean in there um, anyway so it's really nice I really like the, um, that that customize uh, ability right there uh, jumping into sound um, lots of cool stuff in here so you can enable the volume panel uh, you're wondering what the volume panel is oops that is the notification um, when we go ahead and click this generally speaking this is all you would see so if we wanted to uh, once you enable the volume panel you actually get this option as well hit the little settings button there and you can monitor um, adjust whether you want to change around you know your alarm your notifications the system sound or the ringtones which I thought was fantastic that you can enable or disable that uh, less frequent notification sounds this is really really cool now this is supposed to be able to let you um, decide on how many times uh, it notifies you for notifications. So let's say for instance you got a missed call um, instead of it just notifying you once and then the LED keeps flashing you can actually have it notify you everywhere between three seconds every five seconds every 10 seconds every 15 seconds um, I thought that was really neat unfortunately it doesn't seem to work for me just yet yet again that might be just another bug that needs to wait for some more updates um, you and then there's a bunch of other cool stuff in here as well phone call silence flip over your phone yada 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 uh, we'll go ahead and move down from there. We've got weather. This is just like I showed you. You can choose the weather options to be put in your notification thing on your lock screen, the whole nine yards. You can choose between metric and uh, the imperial system. And for those folks of you that don't know, metric is obviously Canadian and the rest of the world, and imperial is <coughs> just the United States. Awesome. Uh, and we can also choose vibrations, which I, th which I thought was kind of neat. It kind of um, reminds me of uh, stock Samsung firmware where you're actually able to customize the um, pulses of the vibration um, for notifications or whatever it may be, which I thought was really neat. Kind of a neat little addition there. Uh, of course, we can jump into performance, which is the heart of the beast, if you will. Uh, we've obviously got um, the option to overclock, underclock. Uh, as you can see here, I can't do anything because unfortunately, uh, the particular kernel, which is uh, come stock with AOKP, is a signage mod kernel that doesn't have overclocking abilities and also has limited governors. But we do have on-demand, user space, power save, Pegasus, Q, and performance. Um, I've experimented between Pegasus, uh, power save, and on-demand. Um, I'm going to tell you right now that Pegasus and on-demand, in my opinion, are one of the same, and power save 
doesn't really do a whole lot of power saving. Um, voltage settings, unfortunately, like I mentioned before, this particular kernel doesn't really have a whole lot of customization options, so unfortunately we don't have any voltage settings there for you. Uh, jumping into other settings, though, we do have the option to um, change the amount of free uh, RAM before the Tascular kicks in. You can, of course, set it at boot, and you can set a daily reboot, which I think is fantastic, because everybody should be rebooting their device every now and then anyways, at least once every two days, at the very least, uh, before you start complaining that you're ROM's not working, stuff like that, because a simple reboot will fix a lot of problems, just like rebooting your PC. Uh, so we'll go ahead and back out of there, back out of there again, and we'll move on down. We've got themes if you do decide to download any. Uh, we also have device options, which is actually, as you can see here, Galaxy S3 settings. So you've got the option to muck around. Obviously, if you have the North American version, you're going to see LTE, 4G, whatever. Um, but we have HSPA Plus here because this is the international i9300 version um you can change around with uh the screen the mode uh the scenario negative mode if you wanted i don't know anybody who actually uses negative mode um led fading which i thought was really great um that's basically instead of just flashing on and off flashing on and off it can actually a nice smooth transition of, of flashing in the led uh you can disable or enable backlight and the backlight timeout um as you can see here, nothing really happens. <laughs> Disabled backlight. Yep, okay. Really fancy stuff there. Uh, hepatic, you know, vibrator intensity. It's up to you, right? Customizability. It's Android. We got to love it. Uh, as far as sounds and display is concerned, um, I was really disappointed with the lack of ringtones and notifications. Um, I was kind of expecting to have some extras, you know, maybe just some new ones because eh, generally whenever ROM developers of, you know, pretty well-known ROMs like CM or uh, AOKP or Paranoid, all those guys codename Android to name a couple, um, generally with new iterations or at least brand new versions going from ice cream sandwich to jelly being such a huge incremental step, they're going to include some extra goodies for us such as wallpapers, uh, new ringtones and notifications tones which I really liked um, however that doesn't seem to be the case here at least I haven't been able to discover any new ones on this particular version so that's a bit disappointing nevertheless this is still really 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 early on in the in the building process the development process of AOKP Jellybean uh, so hopefully in the next iteration or at least in the next release candidate when they do come around to making it uh, we'll have some new to sounds there I know it's silly but I like having different sounds a lot of the sounds that they include in CM and uh, AOKP are just so boring and robot in my opinion. Um, anyways, moving on from there, we've got basically standard everything else, display, storage, battery, apps, it's all exactly the same as you would expect it to be. Location, there's nothing new here whatsoever. If we wanted to, I guess we could click on security, screen lock type, we've got none, slide, face unlock, pattern, pin and, pin and password. Um, meh, meh, meh. It's AOKP, it's AOSP ROM, right? Who cares? It's, you know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, and moving on from there, that that's basically it, though. Uh, I mean, of course, we've got developer options, and you can do all kinds of fun stuff in there. And uh, we'll go ahead and click on About Phone. And don't worry, like all the other guys, I'm not going to sit here and start pounding on the Android version to bring up the stupid Jelly Bean thing, because we all know it's Jelly Bean. I think it's so dumb when they do that. It drives me nuts. Uh, anyways, um, now, if I was to talk about some of the issues I've been having, um, if I haven't already mentioned them already, um, the camera seems to crash. Uh, it doesn't seem to be stable, at least consistently, anyway. Anyways, um, taking pictures and video uh, sometimes does seem to crash the application right back to the desktop, uh, as well as trying to access the um uh, the gallery from the camera application itself seems to prove uh, that it crashes as well uh, frequently. So that was a bit disappointing. Um, one other thing, uh, oh, like I mentioned as well, uh, I don't know, actually, I don't know if I've mentioned this or not. Um, in order to get the Wi Fi working on this particular ROM, in the forums, if you read, they do say in order, if you're coming from Jelly Bean to go to this AOKP Jelly Bean, they actually require you to flash back to a stock ICS ROM and then, then you can flash this on top of that. Um, I thought that was really stupid and I hate hate it when I have to jump through hoops to flash a bloody ROM. I don't want to have to flash this ROM, then flash that ROM, and then do this and turn on Wi-Fi, and then wipe data factory, reset cache, and then flash the new ROM, do another factory, blah, blah, blah. That's so stupid. Just, just, just don't release it until it's ready to just be flashed. Boom. Just put it on your SD card, whether I'm on running gingerbread, whether I'm running ice cream sandwich, froyo, I want to be able to put that on my device and just flash it. But nevertheless, I'm not a developer, so I don't know how these things work. 
Uh, so that was a bit disappointing. Um, I did, some people were giving me some mixed results saying that, um, you know, if you're coming from Jelly Bean, that's totally okay. Just go ahead and flash over it and you'll be fine. Uh, and then others are saying, no, that doesn't work. Um, for me, I tried it. No, it didn't work. I did have to, in fact, flash a ice cream sandwich ROM in order to um, get Wi-Fi working. However, unfortunately, Wi-Fi seems to be quite intermittent on my device, or at least this flash. It could just be a bad flash. I don't know. I thought I did a pretty good job on it. Um, but it does seem that if it goes into about a five to 10 minute deep sleep, uh, coming out of it, it reveals that I'm actually now on data, which was a bit disappointing. Um, so nevertheless, eh, eh, it is what it is. And there's a couple of things that seem to not be working. But overall, um, stability wise, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Um, benchmark scores. If we were to go ahead and jump into some benchmark scores really, really quickly before we end this video, um, we'll go ahead and uh, I wonder if I know I did a quadrant score. Um, let's see. Oh boy. Okay. We're going to go ahead and run a couple of benchmarks really quickly for you guys uh, just before we end this. And, uh, and then we'll go ahead from there. But um, I haven't been impressed with the benchmark scores. One other thing, I did already do a video on this before we do the benchmark scores. Uh, I already did a video on this today. It's called Static ROM Analysts. Um, it's, I think it still think it should be analysis, but nevertheless, oh, it is analysis. <laughs> he doesn't have it like that on the uh, website. Anyways, um, as you can see here, this basically scores your ROM on the customizability. So, uh, so it basically takes the settings provider and um, determines how many values or fields there are basically fields are how many mods and things like that. Um, as you can see here, we have 547 on this, um, which is actually quite substantial compared to um, a lot of other ROMs that I've seen out there with 300 or less. Um, nevertheless, AOKV, I have seen some other ones that are up there to 650. Um, anyways, definitely check out the video if you're interested in this to see what your score of the current ROM that you're running is. You don't actually need root to, to run this. Um, nevertheless, we'll go ahead and run a couple of benchmarks and we'll get back to you in just a moment with the scores. All right, we're back and we finished our quadrant uh, benchmark and here are the scores I'll just go ahead and zoom in a little bit for you guys here and there we go so as you can see underneath the HC 1x depending on whether or not it's running a custom ROM or not like I am actually uh, my final score was 4530 uh, I would have expected to see more quite honestly mind you um, this isn't a finished ROM yet so there could be many many performance upgrades in the future as well as this is just a stock AOKP kernel uh, so I'm sure if I was to flash some sort of other uh, highly modified kernel and then overclock it to something like 17 or 1800 megahertz uh, we'd probably have a much different outcome. Nevertheless let's go ahead and jump into our N22 benchmark really quickly and then end this video. All right so here we are with our N22 benchmark score uh, that is a score of 11.87.4, uh, running at, again, 1400 megahertz, so stock, right? Um, let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and click on this button here to compare it to some others. Go ahead and click on bar chart. And as you can see here, uh, we've got the Samsung Galaxy Note 2 way up there. We've got the HTC One X above the Samsung Galaxy S3 and below the Samsung Galaxy S3, we have my Samsung Galaxy S3 running at 11.85.7. A um, little bit disappointing, nevertheless, it's not a finished ROM and I am running um, an underclocked, or not underclocked, I'm sorry, but a stock clocked kernel. So uh, I'm sure there would be much different results had we done a couple of more modifications. Uh, nevertheless, guys, the ROM, in my opinion, is good enough as it, for a daily driver for a lot of you out there. Um, however, if you do need consistent Wi-Fi working as well as a 100% rock solid camera, um, this probably isn't for you. Maybe wait a couple more iterations and uh, hopefully things will be ironed out by then. Nevertheless, it's been a pretty smooth ROM. The battery hasn't been that bad. Um, speed's been comparable and my data signals have been comparable. Um, so yeah, anyways, check it out guys. It's a lot of fun. Um, I'll be posting a link in the description below for you guys to download it as usual. But that's it for now, guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Uh, if you did like the video, be sure to shoot me a like down below. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this in the future. We do have videos five days a week. So all of your Android addiction, flashaholic, flashery, and constant search of the best apps in the Google Play Store, you'll find it right here. Thanks, guys. We'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.